James, dude, thank you so much for hopping on and, and chatting with me here. Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, man, of course. You know, we go way back. We were just talking yeah. about that before we before we hit record. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know what you do. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I, I think people like maybe follow you on Instagram if they've seen you like power cleaning like 415 pounds or whatever, competing right. in weightlifting. Right. Uh, but I don't think people know like you are you are coaching Mal O'Brien, like Mallory O'Brien, superstar, teenager, next big thing in, in the CrossFit space, just qualified for the games out of Granite Games. Right. Like, I don't know if people know that you coach her or that you've had this like long developmental relationship with her and her athletics. Mm -hmm. Like, how did that even happen, dude? Like, how did you get here? Well, it, you know, it's um, me and my wife, we live down in LA, you know, as you know, from, from um, coming on to your podcast that you had with Scott McGee and everything. And, you know, we was living out in LA for eight years from 2010 to 2018. And I owned a gym out there. And so when we decided to move back to Iowa, you know, I sold my half of my ownership in the gym. And while I was in a transition from driving out from California to Iowa, I also had a teen athlete. And so when I had a teen athlete who was preparing for the games, um, in 2018, I linked up with another CrossFit Games athlete who was training Mal at the time. And then he was like, hey, you know, bring your athlete, you know, while you're moving out here, let's get them training together. And then we can head out to Madison for them to get ready for the game. And that first day when I got into his gym and I saw Mal, the, the, the thing that captivated me about her it wasn't just her skill set, it was her mind, her, her, her mentality of how she could push and want to be the best at what she's doing for, for the sport of CrossFit and preparing for the games. And I just was like, man, like if I, if, if I could get my hands on an athlete like her with her mentality and, and what I know about being an athlete and how to groom an athlete in order to be the best, you know, sky's the limit. And a year later, you know, um, she came to my gym and, uh, 2019 of November and the rest is history. So you guys had, yeah, you guys had this like long season together in 2020 where nothing went right for anybody. I mean, it was like right. the games just like completely fizzed out. The world flipped upside down. Live competition was like a thing of the past. There was no teenage right. competition. How did you structure? Cause like that first year, anyone who's coached an athlete knows like that first like few months six months maybe even that first year of that relationship yeah yeah you're like you're building yeah. a foundation right you're like right. getting to know right. each other you're trying to kind of find each other's edges what makes the other person tick how you can motivate them how you can get them going you know that sort of thing how, how did you even manage to be able to like successfully build that foundation in a scenario like what we were stuck in in 2020 well, you know, it's like, you know, I take coaching like how I, I take coaching serious, like how I do as a parent, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a girl dad. And so, you know, be, me being a father is like my number one role. And so by me grooming my kids, that allows me to be able to groom myself, not just as a coach, but then also as a mentor and a father figure to Mal. And so, you know, building that rapport first is important you know, to, to, to build that trust, to have that faith, you know, not only do I have that faith in her, she needs to have that faith in me. And so when we got together, you know, it struck me because she came to me as like, all right, this is what I want to work on. This is what I need. Burpees. I need to be efficient in my wall balls, my double unders, uh, my gymnastics. Let's get it going. I was like, all right. You know, as a coach, you like, you know, when you get ready for games, you're like, all right, everybody say they want to be the best, but you know, when it's time to do the stuff that's, that you need to work at your weaknesses. Let's see if you could really, you know, hone hone into that. You know, um, take that head on. And Mal just blew the doors open. She just, she just, you know, she just blew it open. It's like every every trial or every phase that I that that I put together for her, she just blew it open and was like, all right, what's next? Let's do this. Let's do that. And and my coach. The, the, the coach athlete relationship, I like to give my athletes, you know, um, I like to give them some some leeway until until they can tell me, all right, hey, you know, can we do this? Can we do that? Um, 
hey, let's try this, let's try that. You know, we bring our heads together. Instead of me being the one that's saying, all right, I know everything because I don't. I need their input. And, and with their input, that allows, the, that allows her to, to be, you know, safe in a safe space. Uh, that allows her to trust herself, to trust me. Uh, that allow her to, to feel good, you know. When you feel good, you move good. You move good, you lift good. You lift good, you perform good. And so by, by her having, you know, somewhat control of uh, who she is as an athlete and, and how she can prepare, and then with add me to the mix and, and our relationship, it's, it's golden, man. And so a lot of people might be watching this and thinking, well, why, why talk to James? Why not talk to Mel? And I think you guys have an interesting strategy here. You know, Mal has uh, uh, Bijan as, as her agent, who also represents a bunch of other, like, you know, top, like, really top athletes in the space, right. like Noah, it comes to mind, right? Um, and there's a, there's a strategy here. You're kind of putting her into a position where she can, like, focus on her training, not be distracted by all the various media uh, requests that are coming in, especially since you only have a few more weeks until games, games time kicks off. You right. know, how did you come about that? that strategy like how did you bring Bijan into the folder did did she already have a relationship with them starting off with like you know that that seems like the reason why I'm asking is because it seems like a really mature way of approaching a career or mature way of approaching a profession and mm -hmm. generally speaking you don't see 17 year olds you know popping out with, <laughs> nah. with strong strategies nah. you know right right you know she's she's very mature for her age and, and you know and during the whole you know, lockdown and the whole COVID thing, you know, we, we, she had a goal, you know, we had a goal. She wanted to um, get out there and make sure that, that everything that we're doing for, for her to be, um, to win the team games at the time, because her focus was, you know, I want to win the team games. You know, I got fourth and I got fifth. I got fourth in 20, 2018. I got fifth in 2019. And after the 2019 season, she ended up um, dealing with Lyme disease. And so that's why she had to take a, a, a break off from the 2019 to 2020 season. But when we got together, she was like, hey, I wanna, I wanna be the best. So with our goal going into the lockdown, stayed the same. She, she had a, a gym in her garage, everything. We would do this, you know, the Skype sessions, we would talk, we would text, everything. She would go in there and train as if we were still in the gym together, even without me. So that's where her mindset was at, you know? And we got into the, the Lowlands um, qualifier sanctioned workout. She, she wanted to, to, to throw her hat in as an elite individual. She won that. Prepared for the Pit Fitness Ranch, which was, you know, the, the, the teams for the CrossFit Games. Um, she won that. And then that's where Bijan, you know, my relationship with Bijan goes back to 2015 of, of GRID, you know, getting to know Noah. Um, I think I, I started knowing Noah in 2014 when he came over to Dogtown and was working with Dusty. Mm -hmm. and, but then once we got together on, on the GRID, the LA Reign, that's when I met Bijan. That's when Bijan started really taking over, you know, for Noah during that season. So we started building our relationship and I always was intrigued by how he you know, carried himself and how he carried his athletes and, and how he does business, you know. And then also, you know, he he's a he, he's a man of God, just like I am. And, and that always stood out to me first, too. And um, so while we at the Pit Fitness Ranch in August, he sends me a text he's like, hey, can we hop on a call real quick? And he's like, man, what you're doing with Mal is just is amazing. He's like, normally I don't I don't you know, go after teen athletes, but there's something about her that's different. And and here I am, I'm, you know, I'm putting myself out there. You know, I just want to let you know that, that that I'm interested, you know, focus on the weekend and, you know, let's hop on a call the next week. And, and I was like, you know what, Bijan, if there's anybody else that I would want to, want her to, to, to manage her, because I don't want to manage her. You know, I, I just want to be her coach. I just want to be her mentor, you know, her father figure. I just want to be that guy behind the scene. You know, I need somebody else. I don't want to wear all the hats with her, but I need somebody to manage her right, to keep her humble, uh, to keep the pressure off because, you know, me coming up as a college athlete, trying to get into the NFL and everything, you know, I know about all that pressure. 
So reason being why she's not on this call, you know, I want to keep those, those pressures down, especially as a 17 year old, as a teen, you know, when everybody's coming at her, we need to keep those pressures down. And, and I told him, I was like, man, you're the, you're, you're the one for, you're, you're the guy for her. Cause I, I love what you do with Noah. I love what you do with Lauren, you know, Chandler, Spencer, or you're the guy for her and the rest is history. Tell me a little bit about Mal's background, because I think a lot of people don't like, I don't really know much about her. I mean, for me, I had heard about her competing uh, a little bit last year during the sort of online stuff, mm -hmm. but it's really difficult to get a vibe from uh, that type of a competition about someone's potential in the sport. What right. really put her onto the map for me was the Open. I mean, seeing how well she did during the Open, not to mention, by the way, mind-blowing that it wasn't just Mal. Like, Emma also came in right. as a 17-year-old and it was also incredibly competitive. But the fact that we had we had more than one really competitive teenage athlete on the women's side specifically coming in and competing as hard as they did, that was what really put Mal on the, on the map for me. So I'm curious, like, if you can, give me a little bit of background on her. Like, what athletics did she do prior to being competitive, if any? You know, was she doing any other sports? How long she be doing this thing? Like, what what is her background here? Uh, she was a, a former gymnast and and a track sprinter. Um, she 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 did gymnastics all the way up to the age of twelve, and that's when she she started getting into into CrossFit. Her mom will always bring her to uh, to CrossFit with her, and so that's when you know she she started moving a barbell around um, gymnastics. At, from from what she said, gymnastics got you know a little bit too serious for her, so she wanted to step step away from that, and also uh, with track. And then she really loved you know coming into the into the gym doing CrossFit. And so she would go home and tell her dad, "Hey, dad, I need a pull-up bar. You know, I um I need a little rig. I need a barbell. I need this and I need that." And so by the age of twelve, all the way to seventeen. This is where you see, you know, not just with Mal, but with Emma, Emma Lawson and, and Olivia Sulik, like they're starting early, you know, way early. But, you know, now I'm expecting that from from P because P started at, you know, a year, <laughs> a year old. So, you know, I'm a, I, they by these teens starting that early, they get in a jump on everybody, you know, that we so used to, to seeing, you know, the, the elite starting at 19, 20, 21. These kids are starting at 12 or, or even you got some, the next generation coming up, they're starting even earlier. So, you know, that, that, that explains everything from the, the teens exploding this year onto the scenes because they were exposed to CrossFit at an earlier age. Yeah. There's uh, the, the example I like to use for, for why I think we're starting to see the younger athletes really start making a push is, it's like MMA, right? Like UFC used to be a wrestler who kind of learned how to do some boxing or a right. jiu-jitsu guy who kind of learned some stand-up and some Muay Thai. And then it turned into, well, you know, this guy just kind of started in an MMA gym and has just always been doing the combination, he learned how to clinch, learned how to take them tone down to the ground, learned how to defend themselves, learned how to attack right. with their knees and their elbows. Like, you know, the, the fact that you get a well-rounded athlete that started doing the thing earlier and earlier is exactly how like the maturation of the sport should go right right so right. I, I, right. I mean this it makes sense it's just really surprising how quickly it happened <laughs> it feels like it happened overnight right 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 exactly and that that's just the the testament to Mao you know um I gave her the nickname Mao 1000 because on I, I don't know if you saw like the buttery bros or or the or the little content that I do with her she's just she just on the go you know, she just doesn't stop. And a lot of people say, oh, that's because she's 17. And it's like, I'm like, no, that's not because she's 17. It's because her mental, her mindset, you know, she, she has the mindset that she wants to be great. You know? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's very difficult to teach and it's impossible to replace. Like if, mm -hmm. if you're trying to find something that's going to get you the next best thing from that type of a uh, a mindset just doesn't exist. It's having right. that type of an almost an obsession with being the best you possibly can and making a right. mark is is impossible to replace. Right, right. Especially at seventeen, like at seventeen, I was trying to you know 
be the, the, the fastest in, in the nation. I was trying to get scholarships to play football and play D1, but this is their sport. You know, this CrossFit is their sport. CrossFit is their extracurriculum that they're doing. You know, high school football was, was my thing. She's in high school. She's, she's, she's homeschooled. CrossFit is her thing. And so, and, and that's what I respect a lot is that like, wow, like this is your sport. You know, you can make money from this sport at a young age. You don't need some old guy from the NCAA to tell you that you can't make money for your likeness. Like, no, you can make money from your likeness by just making this your sport and being great at it. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that because I think you have a really interesting experience, like life experience and perspective on this. And again, maybe people don't know this about you, but like you were one of the best wide receivers like in the nation at a certain point, like you were putting yourself out there for an NFL career. You played, you, you, you were on an F NFL roster. Is that correct? Correct. So you made it to the league, right? Like you did the thing that people dream of. Like they put posters on the wall. It's like, make it out there. You went through the process of developing, you know, this elite athleticism, putting into practice, proving it on the field and then getting on to the, into the league. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're kind of taking that experience of your own athleticism and your own lessons, both successes and failures. And then you're, you're teaching this like, essentially young woman who's kind of also still a child but who's kind of also an adult now is like in this very interesting age and you're you're using those things to teach her about her role and her profession and her future career and that transition has got to be like twisting your head around right 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 it's it's you know i'm giving her what i didn't have you know i'm i'm giving her um you know, I didn't have that 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 male dominant figure in my life. You know, she has a father, and then and then her father respectively uh, allows me to come in and, and and to 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 be that second father figure to her, that that mentor to her. But but just like you said, being in that position of of knowing the 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 pressure and the accolades of what come to it, is that you know you got to be able to have a small circle. To, to, to deal with the pressures on the outside while you go ahead and do what you love to do and, and what you're striving to do. And that's exactly what, what Mal is doing. And she gets it. You know, she, she's a small town girl, you know, Iowa. And she just, she, she just understands everything that's, that's being thrown at her. You know, she, she understands what I'm doing with her. She understands what's coming with it. And it doesn't phase her, you know. She she said to me in a text because it's funny that like, you know, I have a beast on my hands, right? And it's like I'm still learning how much I need to feed the beast or how much I can feed the beast. And if I starve the beast, then the beast is going to get erratic and want to do so much. But if I just give her just enough to fill the beast's stomach. And she's then 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 that beast is gonna go home and be like, okay, I'm good today. Next day, bring it on, right? Because she wants she wants it that bad. And she told me she was like, I don't know. She's like, you're the only one that probably understand it. And and and, and I don't know if you do, but even if I do make it to the games, even if, even if I do win the games, I don't think I will be satisfied. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, she gets it. Like, like she gets it. She, she understands who she wants to be as an athlete. And like, maybe that just come a dime a dozen or, or she, I always tell her, you're the 1% of the 1%. Everybody don't have that mentality. I didn't have that mentality when I was coming out. I had the talent, but I didn't have that mentality. She has the talent and the mentality and that's dangerous. That's like a Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James. Like they get it. They win the championship. The next day, they're in the gym shooting more shots. Jay Rice catching more balls. Like, she gets it. <laughs> you know, she just, she gets it. And that's what's, that's what's going to make her very dangerous in the sport for, for many years to come. Has it been challenging for you to take on the role of all those different hats you're mentioning, father figure, mentor, coach? You know, like, has it been challenging for you to, to do that knowing that like 
you know, your own athleticism, it's not like it's gone. Like you're not done. Comp- like you're not, if you wanted to go compete in weightlifting, you could go compete in weightlifting. You want to do some cross, you can cross. Like your, your own physicality isn't, uh, isn't like completely out the window. And the selfish reason why I'm asking this is because like, I'm about to become a dad for the first time in a few weeks. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be a boy or a girl. We're going to be surprised. It's going to be awesome. Right. But you know, I, I don't have, I don't have the natural talents that, that you have, but I, you know, I, I like to hold my own. I, I work mm-hmm. out and the idea of, you know, almost like losing my own individuality in becoming a father. I'm curious, like, is that, has that been a challenge? Like you, you already raised a bunch of kids, you have a bunch of kids, but has that been a challenge for you with your athleticism and turning that into the role that you now have with Mal? It, it has, but, but, but I've learned to, to humble myself. I learned to, to be 100% real with myself and remind myself that God has, has put me in a position to where I've succeeded in other areas. And those areas that I succeeded now is not, is not the areas that I need to focus on. It's the next generation, it's my kids, it's Mal that I need to take the areas that I succeeded at that I have that I've got the experience in, that I, you know, got the education in and provide it to them and put it out into the world. You know, it's, you know, when it weightlifting, I I could do that. Like it's there's, you know, I could like, like I'm so focused on 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 coaching and my gym and my kids that like, you know, I don't I, I don't need the time for myself because it, it's not about me. It's about them. I need their future to be 100 percent in the right, you know, I need their future to, to, to be better than what it is right now. And, and that, that's going to be my legacy is living through them, living through my kids, living through Mal and having them spread out into the world, you know? So, so I'm, I'm okay with putting my athleticism on background because I, I know what I can do. I know that, you know, weightlifting is, is, I mean, I mean, it's not that hard. I could just, you know, I just power clean. It's not, <laughs> you know, it's not like I need to, you know, I don't, I don't do as much volume for, for weightlifting that I need to do because I, I understand my body type. You know, I understand that like, Hey, in order for me to work up to, to get to 420 pounds, I'm just going to go, you know, 135, 225, 315, 365, you know, 405 and I'm there. Now, I don't need so many reps. It's, it's, I don't need to, to put so much focus into that. You know, it's, it's really, it's not a challenge for me. And, you know, my challenge is right now is how can I better my kids? How can I better Mal? How can I help her reach her goal? How can I help others reach their goal? And, and, you know, being in that father figure role and stepping back and saying, hey, it's not about me. It's about them. I'm good with it. What's the learning process been like? You you kind of you kind of use that analogy of like uh, you know Mal's like a beast that you've got. You like you can feed, you can kind of starve. You kind of have to like play that push and pull. What's mm-hmm. that learning process been like? Developing that level of of like CrossFit fitness, you know, like have you like what mistakes have you made that you've learned from, or or are you still like just kind of feeling out those edges because like who knows what she's capable of? You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, man, um, I would say that a a, a little bit of it, I'm still, I'm still learning, you know, with her. Um, the great thing about it is she keeps me honest, you know, she, she, she keep me working, you know, um, Hey, let's get in the gym. Let's go. All right. We're up. We're going, Hey, on the rest day. Hey, let's, let's get in there and, and, and do more work. All right. Let's go. Like, like she, like, I, I appreciate that hard work and, and just seeing it, you know, right there, right in front of me. is just, ah, man, it's just, it's, I, I just shake my head all the time. Like I, like I'll try to program all her stuff for her. I, I'll try to make the hardest workout for her. Right. That benefits her for her training and she'll just kill it. And I'm just like, I do this a lot <laughs> and I'll give her a fist bump and I'm just like, man, you know, and then, and then we'll sit back and we'll talk and I'll say, Hey, you know what? Um, 
you went you you went seven seconds in your rest before your transition and you, let, let's try to cut that down went, oh okay hey open up your mouth just like how sam briggs and 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 matt fraser breathe when they take a deep breath through their mouth and they get right back on the barbell let's do that hey chest first on the barbell no snake and no hips first chest first everything else that's good you know they, there's really not much you know with mal to uh to really, you know, tell her, you know, critique her a bit. She just, she just goes, man. She just, I don't, I don't know if you saw her at the Granite game. She just, when it, when that buzzer go, she just goes and it's, and, and it's scary. Yeah, she was, scary is a great way of describing her at the Granite games. Like she was on a war path that yeah. entire weekend. And you know, you know, Tommy said it right. Tommy was like, it seemed like, she got upset for not hitting that 200 pound snatch. She was pissed. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Armin, I'll tell you, when we got back there, she was pissed. She she was pissed and it, and it doesn't take, you know, anything to 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 get her going, that, that much to get her going. She was pissed that she missed that. And then that dumbbell thruster run, that's why she came out, she was on fire. Yeah, she looked, she looked like she was burning hot. Like yeah. she won. Did she win two events in a row after that? And three. like three events yeah. in a row after that. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah. like, okay, I get it. Please. <laughs> like, we get it. We get it. Yeah. 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 So so the 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 thing that I that I am learning, really learning, and I made a mistake on is like her her D load weeks. She hates D loads. I'll D load on the volume. But the intensity uh, uh, still be up. But when I say deload, is like the weights, like coming down to like 70, 80 percent and then trying to ramp it back up. She hates that because she doesn't she she feels as if she loses strength. So so when I'm deloading for her, it's more so volume intensity stay about 80, 85. But then, you know, on the weights, I got to stay in between 85, 90 percent to keep her feeling good. Right. So so. That's where I told you in the beginning, you know, our our dialogue and, and how much she trusts me as a coach and I trust her as an athlete. She'd tell me like, hey, I don't like D-loads. Keep it at 90%. Okay, let's do that. Because that make her feel good in her mind. And now when she feels good in her mind, she can go ahead and accomplish anything. Instead of saying, oh man, I'm, I feel weak today. I can't lift. Oh, I hate this. Like, like she, really, she, she really gets in, 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 into her mind when she doesn't, feel like she's doing something right so so I always just try to you know make sure I manage it right to to keep her her mind sane and keep her body good and and um uh, yeah man yeah I think that's an important thing to to keep in mind some people may be you know, watching or listening to this and they may be trying to wrap their brain around the role of a coach um, on an athlete like that you know a young athlete a developing athlete and yet a very elite athlete to begin with and uh, I think it's it's really important because you're you're kind of like talking about it as if it's not just expected, but like you've experienced this, right? Like you've right. had a lot of really high level coaches in many different uh, in many different sports, so you get this. But the idea of getting to know your athlete in order to tailor what's happening directly to their strengths, weaknesses, and desires is really important because, like, if you go by the book. The book is like, okay, well, if you're deloading, you have to bring down your intensity as well as your volume. You, you can't, you pretty, you really shouldn't be pushing, you know, anything that's going to be uh, above 85, 90% because then you're really risking, you know, they're a little bit too burned out on this or their CNS mm -hmm. isn't quite ready to apply. It's like, you know what? Yes, maybe, perhaps, but in real life, in practice, you're going to find ways of, of making the adjustments necessary to keep your athletes sharp, keep them developing, keep them fresh. And, and, you know, like that's the important thing. Like, God forbid there's a competition, uh, like her, God forbid her semifinal was online because then that'd just be another online competition. The fact that she has an in-person competition that she had to train for, peak for, travel for, compete and, and, and be able to feel what it's like to be cooking in the sun underneath, like, uh, <laughs> like that bright sun on top yeah. of the turf. Like that's, perfect experience for what's actually going to happen in Madison. Right. And I think that's, that's right. really important for people to wrap their brain around. Like, it's not just, all right, here's the whiteboard. Here's what you're doing today. 
it's a dialogue. It's a relationship mm -hmm. that you're building. And the, the fact that you're highlighting the trust that it takes from both your sides, uh, I think it's, is really key. Like that's something that a lot of people maybe don't understand that they should try to wrap their brains around. Right. Right. You know, and, and I'm in the gym with her six, seven, eight hours a day, um, Monday through Wednesday and then Friday and Saturday. And, you know, her normal rest days are, well, Thursday is like her active recovery. She calls that, you know, a rest day, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, Sunday is her true rest day. But, you know, when I'm in there with her, I'm watching her, you know, I look at her facial expressions and, and you know, I, I could tell from her body language if, you know, um, if Wednesday training was was too much for her and she didn't recover enough, but hey, you know I could call her audible on hey we'll move this workout to for, uh, to Saturday. We don't need to do this today. Hey, let's, let's let's hop on the bike. Let's you know let's flush out your legs. Hey, let's go for a walk. Let's go hop on a runner. Go for you know a thirty minute run. You know clear your mind. You know we don't need to pick up no dumbbells, no barbells. We don't need to do no burpees, pull ups, anything. Let's just clear your mind. You know and that's that's most of or, or some of you know our our week you know we're we you know she she appreciates that I call the audibles on on you know on her her training instead of her saying you know I'm going to push through and I need to because I'm tired like no you're allowed to fail in here you're allowed to be tired in the gym because you get those extra days to come back and get better right so you can be better out there on the floor. Instead of being, oh, I'm tired, but I need to push through this. It's, no, you're hurting yourself even more. You're putting yourself at more of a risk to get hurt, and then now you won't be able to compete, right? So, so, so I always, you know, mix up or, you know, while I'm watching it, hey, how you feeling? I'm always asking her, how you feeling? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. <sighs> yeah, I'm good. Not nah, <laughs> you say you took too long. <laughs> you took too long. Nope. No, we'll, we'll switch it and she'll be okay with it. Even sometimes it's a struggle. You know, that, that's when the beast comes in. She's like, no, Jane, I, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of toggle back and forth. And then she's like, okay. And then what's weird is 30 minutes later, she'll get her second win. And then be like, all right, I think I can do that workout. And I'm like, okay. You know, and, and, and then I'll give in because then I'm watching her and I know that and I can see the, 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 the different facial expression and the body language on her. If we didn't do that workout right now, and then 30 minutes later, she had come to me, hey, I, I got my second win from that in rep. Now, can we go ahead and do, you know, this this five round? Yeah, yeah, you, you, you moved really good. You look good, you look better. You talking better, you're upbeat. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. And she'll come back and do it. Yeah, because it's not just about checking the boxes and doing a bunch of volume, right? There has to be a certain level of quality and intensity that shows up in each right. of those workouts for you to get what it is you're trying to get out of it. Right. And yeah, right. that that is having another person there, like the coach. Again, it's not just about like writing out here's your workouts. Like, here's why you're doing this. Here's yep. how it's going to help you improve. And if you don't meet those markers, it's not about doing all these burpees and wall ball. It's about what it is we're getting out of this exact right. piece right yeah right because i'm always telling them, you know anybody could go ahead and write up a program and do the work but you you already know with crossfit you got to have the volume you got to have the intensity and you got to be able to do this in a certain time domain so if you're not meeting that time or if you're not hitting these amount of reps to be able to to compete with the elites then you know what are we doing? But from start to finish, you've been here to where you worked your butt off and and you know that you're not going to the games to participate. You know, you're going to the games to compete. If you were if, if you're, you know, um blessed enough to get on the podium, good. But at least you know you went into the games not expecting to just participate. Hey, yeah, I'm here. I made it to the games as an elite. No, I'm coming there to compete so that's our motto that's our lane uh, i always tell her stay in your lane tunnel vision we're not going there to participate we're going there to compete you know wh what's the point of showing up if you just want to get a you know participation jersey and just say yeah i'm a games athlete no we want to go there and push the best of the best in this sport to the brink to where they know like hey Mal O'Brien is here
I love to hear it, dude. It sounds like you've got, it, it sounds like she has the right team around her. Like you've got, you've got her moving in the right direction. That's got, that, that's like firing me up just to hear you yeah. say that. So that's super <laughs> dope, dude. Um, I appreciate you, James, taking the time to talk to me here. Uh, yeah, all the best, you, all my love to you and your family, man. It looks like you guys are doing some great things. Uh, I'm excited to see what Mal's got going on uh, yeah. at the games. And uh, yeah, and I, I'm sure in like uh, probably nine Somewhere between eight and ten years from now, we'll be talking about P. Oh yeah, <laughs> six years. <laughs> six years when right. she turned fourteen. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. That's very exciting yeah. times, man. Well, thank you so much, dude. Good luck with everything. Thank you, man.